Do you want to talk a little bit about the cicada invasion? No, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, scary if you're a cicada. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we were talking before the show, it's like in the Atlanta metropolitan area, the 17-year cicada is just not prevalent down here. There's maybe a few in isolated places, but it's not much. We have the yearly cicadas that come out in, in June, July, and we hear those. But it's just that's nothing compared to what these things are. I had the opportunity to be in far north Georgia uh, a few weeks ago when these things were at their peak. I, it was amazing. Uh, they were everywhere. You could just look up in the air and just see them flying all over the place. And they're, you know, they're the size of your thumb. They're a decent-sized little bug. And, and they're loud. And they're really, really loud when they crank up. And uh, you're just hoping for later in the day when they settle down in the evening so it'd just be a little quieter outside so you can actually hear something. But there's a lot of talk and how that relates to birds. That when these guys erupt every 17 years, that they disrupt the breeding processes of our songbirds. Oh, it's I like, didn't oh, know. wow, how do they do that? Well, there's a lot of speculation about how they do that. And uh, some studies have been done. And it, a lot of people say, well, it's just so much noise that these birds can't even hear the calls oh, to find wow. a mate. It's just no way they're going to hear it during the daytime. And there's a lot of other theories and speculation about how it disrupts bird breeding and there's some studies about how the birds do that year, how the birds do the next year, and how they rebound or don't rebound. And this is far too short of a show to go into a lot of details of that, but I have two really good sources. If you want to read further on it, you can go and hear the, some of the competing theories and some of the explanations of why they think these uh, eruptions of cicadas hurt the bird population, at least temporarily. And of course, the other side of it is there's a lot of scrumptious bugs for these birds to eat. Do they eat a lot of them? I don't know. But you can, you can read, or we have that to show on the screen. Yeah, we do. And uh, these are very easy things to look up. And I suggest, yeah, pull up, pull up one of them, uh, two of them, and just, just kind of read a little bit and give yourself a little education so, about what some of the thoughts are about yeah. how nature interacts with itself during periods like this where there's something so unusual. So, yeah, one of the first uh, ones you suggest is Audubon plus cicada plus songbirds. Yes. And then this will take you to uh, a link like this one. So this says that the birds may hold clues to the bizarre life cycle of brood X. So have yes. you had a chance to look into that? Like I, I skimmed. There's so many articles and so many things about the speculations of uh, how they may disrupt. And like yeah. I said, uh, probably one of the most plausible to me and the one I saw uh, mentioned most was the sheer volume of insects and the noise that they make. Mm -hmm. I, it sounds plausible because like, okay, in that den, you can't hear a bird chirp. There's no way. Mm -hmm. and, so this is, and these guys are everywhere where they're spread. It's not like, oh, there's just somebody in, in the yard two doors down. No matter where you go in these areas, there's thousands and thousands of these things. And yeah, you're not going to hear the songbirds at all. So that would be a disruption, at least where these guys are active for that period of time. Yeah. So, and there's some other reasons. And then we look at them as maybe the birds eat them. Wow, here's a lot of food for the birds. I don't know. Uh, maybe they eat so much they're too tired to mate. <laughs> maybe, because these are big, tasty morsels. And by the way, cicadas are not, uh, uh, they don't bite you. They're not poisonous. Uh, they're, they're just big insects. They're kind of really scary looking, but there's nothing to them. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're a bird, and they're exciting. Absolutely. So, yeah, <laughs> look up those articles and just, yeah. just look into them and, and, and see what you think. And you have another suggestion, suggested reading. I think that's uh, Smithsonian plus 17-year yes. cicada. Yeah. So, yeah, just key in that into your search engine, you know, uh, Smithsonian plus, the plus sign, 17-year uh, or or delightful weirdos. Your cicada, yeah. How would you like to be called a delightful weirdo? <laughs> <your call? laughs> and, uh, I, I enjoyed reading both of these uh, articles, or, or actually several articles out of each one of these to get more information about. I heard learned a lot of things I didn't know about cicadas. And you, you need to make sure you read these to be prepared for the next thing. It's only 17 years from now. Yes. <laughs> Hello, this is Richard Cole. I want to thank each of you for watching, and I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, 
and don't forget to share it.